So hello everybody, welcome back to Gunshot and as you can tell this week we have a pair of Parazzi's to look at. Uh, I'm going to um, go through all of the features, hopefully, of both guns. We have a, a, a Parazzi MX2000 and a Parazzi MX2000S. Um, I'm going to cover, hopefully, um, what the Parazzi lineup actually looks like and what it means uh, and clarify some of the um, stuff that I wasn't aware of certainly before I uh, I started looking at these two guns um, give you a, a good overview of the two of the two guns and then talk to you about what they like to shoot so let's start with these two guns um, as you can see they're both uh, very similar in terms of uh, this forend design and the general layout on the to be honest they look very very similar to look at um, however they are internally some differences uh, the MX2000S is actually uh, an MX12 and the MX2000 is an MX8. And what does the 2000 mean? Well, that actually refers to the grade of the action. The, uh, the amount of engraving and uh, detailing that goes into the action is what makes a 2000. The uh, 2000S is based off the MX12, the 2000 is based off the MX8. Okay, so what's the differences between an MX8 and an MX12? Well, there are a few, but to be honest, um, I think the, the easiest way to show you this is actually going to be to take the stocks off. The big difference is, and uh, by the way you'll know how easy it is to get the stocks off one of these guns, uh, you get, when you buy a Parazzi, this uh, large red screwdriver, which you can use to remove the stock. And it's literally that big bolt, and off she pops. And here you see the guts, the good bit, the expensive part, shall we say, of these two guns. Uh, this one off as well. I'll show you very quickly uh, the major differences between the two guns. And there you have it. So, the MX12, fixed um, non removable trigger group, coil springs, the MX8, removable trigger group, V springs, leaf springs, alright. Uh, the other major difference is this thing comes with the trigger selector as standard, which is in the safety. The MX8 does not. Okay, this one actually has the optional um, barrel selector, which, as you can see, makes the uh, uh, trigger guard this unusual shape. But this actually has, like with everything in Parati, you can pretty much have what you want, and this gun has had it done. Um, if I was to turn them over, you can see that this gun uh, has the safety and bar selector here whereas the MX-8 just has a safety. Uh, the MX-8 is the older of the two designs uh, this was primarily designed as a trap gun hence the lack of a, a barrel selector um, and the MX-2000, uh, sorry the MX-12 followed later I believe in the 80s and um, has this coil springs rather than V-springs although in fairness having shot them both back to back the trigger is absolutely excellent I mean out of this world, and I, I made a statement about the uh, the, the Krieghoff a little while ago about how I had the best trigger of any gun I ever shot. Well, uh, I was wrong. This is a significantly better trigger. It is absolutely the most crisp, clean, um, just perfect trigger break you'll ever you'll ever feel. I, they may be better, they may, and I haven't shot one yet, but this is amazing. This is absolutely up to snuff in terms of triggers. But cosmetically, I think the only difference I can find, other than, obviously, uh, Parazzi's are made basically uh, to specification. If you specify whatever you want on a Parazzi, Parazzi will make it for you. Um, the only difference you, you're gonna be able to tell really between a, a, an eight and a 12 is here. You can see that the removable trigger group is significantly wider than the non-removable one. Uh, so there's a bit more wood around the uh, the trigger group area on the 12 than there is on the 8. Um, other than that, all of the other differences are pretty much um, down to the owner's specification. Now, what I've done there, by the way, just while you weren't looking, is to remove the trigger group. It is literally a case of you push the safety forward quite hard um, and then the trigger levers out thus and gives you access to this trigger group and it is quite a, a compact work of art of a thing um, you can see the hammers which are 
um, powered by these V springs, the sear, and obviously the uh, the barrel selector here. The um, as you can see that the the hammers have different angled faces on them, which meet the uh, firing pins, which obviously go to the top and bottom barrel. And it is that simple to take apart. Um, you get a toolkit with it, which allows you to um, change out the V springs if needed, and you can very quickly service the gun whilst shooting essentially. Um, if you were to have a failure you could be carrying a spare trigger group and replace it on the fly and feel no difference in the gun. So let's also talk a little bit about some of the cosmetic differences between these two guns and this is purely down to the way that these guns have been built per the owner's specification. Um, as I mentioned before um, this MX-8 which doesn't normally have a barrel selector has one fitted which is an optional. Um, the rib on these guns uh, a quite a nice demonstration of the two kinds of rib that you can have fitted if you um, if you like. So we have here uh, a tapered flat rib with no centre tram line and it has a target bead which is white. The uh, MX-8 has again tapered rib flat with a game bead and a centre tram line. And if honestly the two I prefer the one with the tram line. Um, and of the two it's the better fit. Uh, that's purely just down to the, the bit of wood that we were able to find to go on it. There are a million different configurations and it, every one are, are different for these guns if you are going to get one. Um, you can buy off the rack, um, obviously that will be a gun that's been specified by your dealer from Parazzi because they are literally, these are an entirely bespoke weapon. You can literally get one of these made completely to your specification and if you buy one off the rack chances are that's been one that's been specified by the dealer to be of average dimensions and a, and a, a design that's likely to sell but for no extra money apart from obviously the cost of the hotel you can go to the Parazzi factory and um, get one of these things made completely to your specification absolutely everything is down to you and your requirement you can literally have you choose the wood you choose the shape you choose the foreign design you choose what kind of rib you choose whether or not you want a ventilated mid rib or not you choose the style of rib you choose the engraving you can have anything you want on one of these things um, let's pop one open and have a look at the mechanicals which are really really something to look at Okay, so I've opened up the MX-8 for us to have a look at the um, mech in detail. So, let's have a look here. Um, as you can see, very, very thick, very strong um, action fences with those drawers um, that are machined into the sides behind the pivot, the, uh, the jointing uh, stud pins. Um, these lock up into these two recesses in the lump. Uh, and give you that incredibly strong lockup on the gun. Um, the actual locking itself is carried out by these two H pins that protrude, uh, and I may have lost focus there, so I do apologise. Um, which you can see. There you go. He says. Let's just try and get that in focus for you. There you go. All right. That'll lock open again. It's a really, really, really strong system and it manages to do it, I think, without sacrificing any elegance. Um, when you look at an equivalent, say a DT-11 or even a Parazzi, sorry not a Parazzi, a, a Krikov, there's a degree of, um, by, by all means it's a very, very strong um, weapon, but it gives away a little bit, I think, in terms of the design because it is quite uh, heavy looking. and. Uh, these things, I don't know, I think that's a very, very elegant, pretty gun. Very, very sort of typically Italian, um, beautiful design. And um, yeah, it is a, it's a, it's a bit of a thing of beauty to be honest, I, I will admit. Being a fan of Krieghoff's, um, very pleasantly, um, not surprised because let's face it, nobody, nobody expected these things not to be good, but uh, they're just a, a real Tour de force in terms of, of engineering. Um, very, 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 very nice things to, to handle, to look at, um, and certainly when you take them to bits. There, uh, there's a lot going on in there, and they're a very, very clever gun. Um, very, very nice. Between the two guns shooting them, 
Aside from the obvious differences in fit, because they are uh, two very different guns, uh, one's a 32, the other one's this one's 30 and a half. Um, I preferred the balance of the 30 and a half, the slightly shorter gun. I preferred this rib with the tram line uh, versus the uh, the flat one uh, without. But honestly, that I couldn't tell the difference. I genuinely couldn't. The trigger is absolutely stunning on both guns. Whether or not you want a barrel selector or not, I think is pretty much going to be the decision that's going to push it either one way or the other. Um, and whether or not you want uh, leaf springs or, or, or coil springs. But I genuinely couldn't tell the difference with the guns once I'd shouldered them. Um, ergonomically, and this is where it's going to be difficult, because these are entirely bespoke weapons, these are empty obviously, um, it is incredibly difficult for me to make a judgement based on fit because these weren't fitted to me. Well, we managed to find a bit of wood for this one that actually fits me pretty well and as a result I prefer this as the out of the two guns simply because it fit me better. Um, as, a, as, a, as a shooting tool um, it's absolutely fantastic. I, I don't think this is going to be a surprise to anyone when I say that uh, this is an absolutely fantastic shotgun. <laughs> This isn't going to be a surprise to anyone. It is really an amazing tool. Very, very nice to shoot. Um, I gave this to my wife um, and let her try it, and she loves it as well, which is a bit of a blow because it now means I'm likely going to have to get one. But uh, <laughs> um, what, a, what a fantastic gun this is. Um, I couldn't tell you. MX12 and MX8, don't know. Genuinely, both fantastic. Couldn't feel any difference between them. Um, and very much down to uh, your personal preference, as I said. As far as barrels, I will talk a little bit. Obviously, both of these guns are fixed choke, and the recommendation from uh, the, both the dealer and from Parati is that you stick to fixed choke. Pick your chokes, um, specify what you want, and then stick to them. Um, it definitely takes away a degree of worrying about what choke you've got in, because you've just got to hit whatever you're going to hit with what you've got in it. Um, the gun shoots beautifully, it moves beautifully, it points beautifully. There's absolutely nothing to say that I don't like about it. Um, the balance is somewhat different to what I'm used to. It's, um, it's much more uh, traditional uh, sport uh, in that uh, it's quite light at the front by comparison to mine, although the overall weight is very similar. I think it's about eight and a half pounds. But genuinely, duh, there's not, not to like about them. Um, I would strongly recommend, I would if you have the wherewithal and you're going to spend this much money on a gun, go to Parati and get one built. It is literally no more money to have a gun built bespoke for you in Parati at the factory than it is to buy one off the right. You can spend the weekend, I think uh, Bio will have a weekend coming up in October. Uh, you go with John Henry, spend a weekend in the hotel, um, you spend some time in the factory, have a fitter look at you, build you a gun whilst you pop for lunch um, with the bit of wood that you've selected, uh, do a, a very rough, uh, and this guy apparently has been doing it for millennia, he knows what he's doing, um, he'll knock a gun together that will fit you, fine tune it and over the course of the weekend you will have, having spent time on the pattern plate and having spent time with their fitter and then going through all of the bespoke options that you can have with the gun and John and in, I think, around about three months turnaround time, a gun of this caliber will be delivered to you and it won't cost you any more other than the cost of the hotel stay. Um, yeah, I, I cannot, I can't say a bad thing about them. Um, they're, they've both been fantastic to shoot. Um, it's a Parati. <laughs> um, it's a lovely, lovely thing and you should probably get one if you can. Okay, so I'd like to say thank you very much to Biowall and to Chedite this week uh, for providing these cartridges for me uh, to test with. Um, I have had a, a good shoot with them and uh, they're a lovely cartridge. I believe they're about £248 a thousand, uh, which isn't too bad at all. Uh, they're a, a very clean burning cartridge, very, very fast. Um, as you can see, they've got a very pretty... Uh, like 22 mil cup, I think that is for a 70 mil cart. Um, these are, I believe, the cartridges that Ed Ling used to shoot at the Olympics. Uh, silver washed shot, quite hard, 
Um, apparently gives great patterns. I certainly got good breaks with them. Um, they're, um, as I said, very fast, and the recoil impulse on them was quite. Uh, how should I describe it? It wasn't. It wasn't sharp. It was. It was a good shove rather than a punch um, for a, for a fast cartridge. Um, really, really nice to shoot, uh, and um, I recommend you give them a try. All right. Thank you very much again to Chile and to Bible for providing these for me. Yeah. What more can I say? Get one. <laughs> All right. Um, listen, guys. Thanks very much for tuning in this week. Um, please subscribe if you have enjoyed it.